All right, welcome back. So we are at C1, talking about dependent and independent variables. You guys know the drill. Get your notes and a pencil so you can follow along as we go through here. So an equation can describe the relationship between two variables. Okay, we're going to jump back to equations now. Two variables, an equation such as y equals 3x shows how the variables x and y are related. The value of y depends on the value of x. So x is the independent variable and y is the dependent variable. Okay, if you think about those words, y depends on x. So in order to figure out what y is, we have to know the value of x. Okay, y depends on x. x is independent. The equation shows that whatever the value of x is, the value of y is three times that value. Okay, so we're still talking about this equation up here. y equals 3x. So this equation is telling us that whatever x may be, y is going to be three times greater. So we could organize the possible solutions using a table. This is just like the input-output tables that you guys used to do whenever you were younger, or maybe you called them in and out tables. Okay, so let's start with our table here. Our equation, one more time, y equals 3x. And we can just pick values for x. Okay, x can be absolutely anything right now. So we're going to choose some small, simple numbers to work with. So let's start with 1. If x is 1, we're going to put it into our equation. 3 times 1 would be equal to 3. So y is 3. If x is 2, we would do 3 times 2, and y is equal to 6. If x is 3, 3 times 3 is 9, so y is 9. Okay, we could do some more. Let's jump to 10. If x is 10, 3 times 10 would be 30. Okay, and you could just continue on picking any number that you wanted to for x. Then we can take those values and we can write them as an ordered pair so we can graph our equation. Notice we've got an x and a y value, and whenever we graph points on the coordinate plane, we had to have an x coordinate and a y coordinate. So we're going to use these numbers as the ordered pairs to put on our graph. Okay, see how I'm getting these ordered pairs? You guys can go ahead and write them with me. You can even go with 10, 30 here. Okay, so as we've learned already this year, the x-axis is the horizontal number line, the y-axis is the vertical number line, and we would graph those points uh, just like we would graph any points. So our first one is at 1, 3. So we go over 1 and up 3. That point's going to be right here. Okay, the next one is at 2, 6. So we go over 2 and up 6. And then we go over 3, up 9. And we just keep going. If we would have done 4, we would have had 4, 12. Okay, do you notice that our points are forming a straight line? If we continue this, they're just going to keep in that same pattern and it would go on forever. And any point on that line is going to be a solution to the equation y equals 3x. Okay, and we can see that as x increases, so does y. y is three times the value of x. Very good. Let's go on to the next pair. Okay, let's put some meaning behind these equations. Here we go. Abby earns, hang on, let me do this. Follow along with me. Abby earns $8 each day she walks her neighbor's dog. Write an equation to show how the relationship between the amount of money, M, Abby earns, and the number of days, D, that she walks the dog. Create a table of values and then graph the equation. All right, so let's think about what we know. She earns $8 each day she walks her neighbor's dog. 
So we are looking for the relationship between the money she earns and the number of days that she walks the dog. Okay, so in my table over here, I'm gonna put D in the first column, which represents the number of days, and I'm gonna put M in the second column, that's the money that she earns, okay? And we know she earns $8 each day she walks their dog. So if she walks the dog one day, she's gonna earn $8. If she walks the dog two days, she would earn 16. If she walks the dog three days, $24. If she walks the dog for four days, she will earn $32. And if she walks the dog all five days of the school week, she is going to earn $40. So we're looking for the relationship between the days and the months. That means we're looking this direction. Okay, what are we doing to one in order to get eight? What are we doing to two to get 16? Do you see the pattern here? So each time we have to take the number of days and multiply it by eight. So we're gonna say eight D, eight times however many days she does this will equal the amount of money that she makes. Okay, and then we can take this information and we can get our ordered pairs All right, go ahead and write those ordered pairs with me here. And we'll keep going. Then we can graph it. So our X axis is going to represent days. Let's label that. And the Y axis is going to represent the money. So I'm gonna put a dollar sign here. Okay, and our first point is at one eight. So we've got one point there, and then we go to 16, which is gonna be just a slight bit above here. So my graph is not the best one. Okay, we're gonna end up off the graph because this is gonna increase quickly. But you can see those two points form a straight line, and if we had um, a little bit more space, I'm gonna make that better. If we had a little bit more space, we would see that that is going to continue on also and all of our points would form a straight line, okay? So which of these is our independent variable? Would it be the days or the money that she earns? Well, our independent variable is going to be the number of days. Typically, whatever is on your x-axis is the independent variable. The dependent variable is the money that she makes. The amount of money depends on how many days she walks the dog. Okay, so as long as we know how many days she's walking, we can figure out the amount of money she's going to make. And your dependent variable is typically on the y-axis. All right, we've got one more example we're gonna go through here. Here we've got a graph to start with about Greg and his bike rides. Notice on the x-axis, they're showing us the number of days. The y-axis is the total distance in miles. So again, read along with me. Greg rides his bike 10 miles each day. The graph shows the relationship between the number of days, D, he rides, and the total number of miles, M, he rides. Fill in the table of values and answer each question below. Okay, so our graph is showing the relationship between the days that he rides and the total number of miles. And we know he goes 10 miles each day. So this graph um, here is five days, so that means each line is gonna be one day, two days, three, four, five, and so on. But then on the y-axis, we're counting by tens. So this is gonna be 10 miles, 20, 30, 40, and so on. So we know one day he goes 10 miles, that's this point right here. Two days he's gonna go 20 miles. Three days, 30 miles, and four days, 40 miles. Okay, so we want to write an equation to represent this. So when we look here, what are we doing to the days to get to the miles? What did we do to 1 to get to 10? What are we doing to 2 to get to 20? 3 to get to 30? Okay, 
that pattern, we're multiplying our days by 10. So however many days he rides, we have to multiply that by 10 to get the miles. So we could say 10 D, 10 times the number of days is going to equal the miles, 10 D equals M. Our independent variable will be the days. The dependent variable are the miles, okay? The more days he rides, the further he's going to go, or the more miles he will ride. So the distance depends on the number of days. All right, if you need to go back and watch some of this again, look back over your notes, go ahead and do that. And then you're going to practice some on your own.